Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some fun. Okay, we've cut our threads, and they look pretty good. Uh, whether they work or not is a whole nother ball game. Uh, but uh, now we need to put a, um, a keyway slot in here, and I don't have the ability to cut that on my mill, so I'm going to experiment by coming in and uh, on the lathe, locking this head in place, and then coming in with a, uh, a, a cutting tool that has the cutting edge on the very point, and just coming in and taking a thousandths off and kind of you know, working somewhat like a shaper, uh, except doing it by hand, uh, and then cutting our groove that way. So uh, we have uh, cut a piece of metal. I'm going to walk you over here to the bridge port. I found an old piece of, uh, you can see right there, it's got a couple of holes in it, uh, an old piece of... Um, of uh, miners uh, shaft uh, you know basically what they did is they chiseled a hole in the in the in the stone and then they put dynamite in the holes and this was uh, one of those hand chisels where you just uh, you know you hit it with a sledgehammer I got this at a garage sale very hard material I'm guessing 8620 or you know, it was back in ancient times, so who knows what uh, size it, or what kind of metal it was, but very hard material. And, uh, and I put it in my, uh, my 90 degree um, head on the mill. And, uh, and I've cut a slight groove. And you can see the groove there in the... Uh, in the end of the piece of material. It's, the groove is not completely finished yet. Uh, we'll be cutting some more to make it wide enough so that um, so that the uh, this uh, lathe bit can fit in there and then we'll go ahead and solder that, silver solder that in place and uh, cut our, our um, shape and cut our wedge and uh, get ourselves a nice uh, knife blade edge or not knife blade but uh, sharp edge and um, go ahead and and uh, put that in the uh, lathe and see if we can kind of get a uh, some sort of a shaper approach so uh, hang in there with me we're going to cut just a little bit more here and I'll be back in a little while and since it doesn't really matter to me whether I'm dead nut center or not uh, we've just kind of eyeballed the center here and we're going to raise the, or drop the table and cut uh, you know about ten thousandths off of the top and then bring the table back up and cut ten ten thousandths off the bottom and we'll just keep expanding that hole until the uh, the little lathe bit fits and once it fits it and it can be a sloppy fit because uh, we want actually a little bit of slop for this silver solder to uh, to do its thing so we're going to turn on And then we've got ourselves a nice little groove. Oh, we're not quite there. But it shouldn't be a problem. We'll, uh, we'll just come in and it could just be a rough edge. In fact, it is a rough edge. All right, so uh, we've got that. And we're going to uh, take it over to the welding table and silver solder this and um, take it from there. We got our piece of rod cleared up, cleaned up. Uh, we've got, um, we took the... Uh, the bit itself and just you know hit it on the sander a little bit just to knock off that uh, that black um, fire scale is what I call it uh, we're, uh, we've got a reasonably good fit here we're gonna take some uh, 
silver solder and run it in on all surfaces so that it sits nicely. Crank up the uh, torch. I just pretty much use my cutting tip for almost everything. It's fairly universal. Bring everything up to temperature. And since I'm a jeweler, I have, um, you know, at my fingertips, I have some real fancy silver solder that would uh, do the trick really well, uh, except it costs a lot of money. And uh, I got this silver solder at a garage sale, I don't know, 20 years ago. And uh, there must have been, oh, I don't know, a pound and a half, two pounds of it. So I just continue to uh, use it in applications where I'm not actually making jewelry. And it works just fine. So uh, what we've got now is uh, we'll just drop some flux right on top of that. And uh, we'll move it around a little bit just to get the flux to kind of flow in. There we go. Get a nice flow there. Let's put a little on the other side. Okay, we got ourselves a nice flow.
We'll give that a chance to cool off and we'll come back after lunch. We've taken our um, our uh, bit and uh, silver soldered it and the solder took fairly well. And now I went back in and and got myself a razor sharp edge right there with lots of support. Got a little bit of an angle here and just a tad of an angle up on top there. And then uh, um, reduce the uh, back sides of both sides of this. So I've got the square up on top and all of the metal behind it uh, just slightly undercut. So we're going to put this in the lathe and uh, we'll probably just put it, uh, put it in one of the holders here and spin it around and put it in position and see what we can do. Okay, this is an experiment. I just don't know if it's going to work or not, but it's worth a try. We've got our our bit in. We've got our we've got our holder in. We've got our bit squared up, and uh, we've got it centered at uh, six two thirty, which is where where I need center to be. And uh, we'll bring it in until we touch. Well, actually, I think what we should do is bring it all the way in. until it just barely touches. There it is. Bring it back. Let's turn it in. And this is probably where we could use the VRO. Let's take it in. Oh, 6,000 just for fun. And we're just going to run it in and run it back. And then take it another five or six, run it in, and run it back. Another five or six. Yeah, I think it's actually working. Just take a few thousandths at a time. Now, uh, one thing I forgot to do was to lock this this down. And I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Cutting edge is uh, sliding right inside, and you can see where it's cutting. And uh, we just take it in and make a pass you take about two and a half or three thousandths make another pass two and a half or three thousandths it looks like we can take five Yeah, I think it's doing what it wants to do. Okay, we've got our groove cut. Uh, it's a little bit out. Um, this, I think this bottom edge right down here has got a bit of a taper to it. So I may come in with another tool and just trim that edge up a little bit so that I can get a nice square surface. But it uh, looks pretty good. So uh, I guess it worked. So now we take it off and uh, test it out on the shaft and see if we uh, come up with, uh, see if it fits. We've pulled the, um, the uh, chuck. We'll clean it up just a little bit here. And uh, now we've got the backing plate sitting here. And uh, we want to make sure that we get all of the crud out of there. Put the backing plate up, 
drop it in place. And it looks like the, uh, the keyway is still a little tight. So uh, we got to come in and play with that a little bit more. And uh, that shouldn't be a problem, but we're going to do that tomorrow. So uh, the way I can see it is my, my bit was off just a little bit. So I just need to come in and square up that uh, this wall right here. This wall seems to be fine. This one's a little bit... It kicks in just a little bit, so I think I can just come in with a uh, with a regular um, uh, bit and uh, or either that or just turn that one around and, and do that. So uh, that all is going to happen tomorrow. For the moment, everything uh, goes back to shutdown. Okay, so the chuck itself. Can we see the chuck? We cannot see the chuck. Okay, so let's come back a little bit. Let's just drop it down. The chuck itself is set up with uh, six lugs, which is pretty easy to do. So six divided into 360, 60 degrees, no sweat. This is a, uh, and so basically what we've done is we've come in and trammed our, our uh, mill, I've probably spent the last two hours doing that, tramming it, getting the rotary table on, squaring the rotary table up, centering it, and then centering the, uh, the uh, chuck plate itself. So, and uh, the measurement from center is uh, three inches, 452 thousandths. And that takes us to the center of the bolt hole. And I'm set up on zero on the, uh, on the rotary table. And the rotary table, set, it works with uh, degrees. So you've got, uh, there's a big wheel here that uh, has all the degrees on it, you know, 360 of them. Then these wheels here have minutes and seconds. This little area right here is seconds. So uh, it, it gets pretty accurate. Um, and if you're not doing five or uh, complicated uh, 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 amounts of uh, numbers, or I mean numbers of, of lug holes, then, uh, then it's, uh, it can go pretty easy. Uh, if you're doing complicated, it's better to go over to the uh, divider head. So we're gonna start with number one here. We're gonna uh, center it, we're gonna drill it, and then drill it to size, and then we countersink it to fit the, uh, the screw head so that the screw head actually buries itself in the um, chuck plate itself. All right, let's get started. And I think we can go at a pretty fast pace here, at least for the smaller drills. It's entirely possible this is going to be a metric, so uh, we're, um, we're going to take it to 3 eighths and we may have to take it just a little bit bigger. And for this drill bit, I'm going to slow things down. Just to make it so I don't burn my bit out. Nice snug fit. Okay. Now 
Now, at this point, we rotate 300 uh, or no 60 degrees. So uh, we're sitting at zero now, and that's uh, here's our indicator on the edge of this. You're not going to be able to see that. I loosen this up and take it on over. this way. There's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then we bring the 60 all the way up to zero, and that locks in minutes, and we're right on the money. All right, it's the next morning. Last night, and I didn't even film it, a uh, big disaster. I'm uh, drilling my third hole in the series of six, and the bolt comes loose, the center bolt. So everything is back to zero again. And, uh, and I'm not sure how to, how to index. Let me loosen this up. How to index my first bolt hole back into position. So I thought about it last night, and I think the only way I can do it is to uh, find something that'll go down into that hole very carefully, very tightly, and then weld a washer onto the bottom of it that has a the ability to clamp it down, and then flatten the washer out on the backside so that it's perfectly square with the with the uh, shaft and then center it on uh, with my drill uh, and then square up the rest of the of the uh, of the uh, the backing plate so that all the rest of the holes are going to be uh, going to be centered so we got probably another hour or two's worth of messing around here just to get this thing back to where we had it yesterday afternoon. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we've got the head on with the uh, backing plate, and now um, let's uh, let's have a look at the uh, at the dial indicator to see what the backing plate's doing. And we're uh, like I don't even see it moving. Maybe a maybe two or three tenths especially that direction so that's one thing now let's move this indicator over onto the head itself and see what we get so we're running a good ten thousands out now, I haven't done, there's a little uh, step on the inside of this head that is going to allow me to square up this whole head. Now, I thought that was pretty accurate to get within to get within 10, but, you know, of course, it's got to be more accurate than that. So we're going to take this thing back apart, and we're going to put the head back on the, uh, back on the lathe, or I mean the backing plate back on the lathe, and we're going to, uh, well, let me just take it apart. And I'll show you what we're going to do. How's that? Okay, so we've got the, the face of the chuck off of the backing plate. And uh, what I want to do is see, you can see this little, uh, this little ridge here, uh, or indent. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a ridge over here that fits that indent, because that is, is precise. 
So, um, and I don't have a, uh, a measuring tool to get out that far. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm taking my veneers and I'm just bringing it out till they're just touching. And that's just about it right there. Well, that's a little bit too tight, actually. Yeah. And I do have a 7-inch micrometer. So we'll lay this down. Oh, we're going to lay it down. There we go. Let's turn this towards us a little bit. There we go. And we come in and making sure that the that the button of the micrometer is at the very end of the of the veneer and the other one is at the very end. We're going to take a measurement here, and that looks pretty good. That's about as tight as you can get it, or as snug as you can get it without going too far. And we got a measurement of 7,312. So I've written that down. And uh, put everybody aside here for the moment. I think we're going to have to take this chuck off and this chuck off and clear things out so we can uh, machine that, uh, that step on the backing plate. So I'll be back in a minute. Uh, Nick Collier here, and uh, it's probably even another three months later. Uh, this project kind of gets put in between other projects. I think we uh, we did the sewer slinger project between the last time we talked and now. But we're at the end. Uh, we've got the thing bolted back up again. We we've, we've machined the uh, the face of this and got that all squared up, and uh, we've put the the chuck back on and now we're down to and I'm going to bring you in a little closer so you can see okay so we've got our head in place and we put a piece of uh, drill rod in here so we got a nice square surface to to run from and uh, so we're going to spin this baby and uh, it's looking to me like we got about a two thousandths run out which is about as good as it can get with a three jaw chuck. So uh, this project's done and uh, and it's only taken, oh, I don't know, almost a year to uh, to get this thing up and running again. Uh, well, not the whole lathe, but just the head. Uh, but, you know, hey, fit it in between other projects. Uh, this is Nick Collier. Hey, uh, subscribe. We have a good time here. Uh, this is Nick Collier signing out.